CCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. I don't know if Commissioner Keith feels threatened by that, <laughs> Robin, or not. I highly doubt it. You highly doubt it, huh? <laughs> Our Indiana County Commissioner is with us this morning, Commissioner Mike Keith, Commissioner Shireen Hess, and Robin Gorman in the studio with us this morning, and of course live on Facebook uh, when they came in. Uh, Robin said that she was going to put the man in the middle. That's good because I'm going to let them go ahead and start off. You're going to let I them start it. off. Came back, right? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Robin, let let us indeed start with you, uh, and uh, and you can step up to the microphone there as we talk with our county commissioners once a month. Conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. And uh, Commissioner Gorman, how are you? I'm good. How are you this morning? Wonderful. Good to see you. I am uh, cold, but I'm hoping cold for the last day for a little while, right? Yeah, well, maybe when you visit with us next, we'll be in the middle of a 75-degree <laughs> sunny day. We'd, we'd take yeah. something like that. Hey, county issues um, at this time of the year uh, generally focus on, well, I guess at any time of the year, generally focus on money uh, and uh, finding it yeah. and, and finding out what are the best ways to use it. Um, and, and I'm sure that's the case now, correct? Of course. And you know, Todd, and we've been talking what probably over the last year now uh, with COVID and the inception of so much what I would call CARES funding in the beginning and then the ARPA funding. Then, of course, the infrastructure bill behind that and um, so many grants and other areas of need that are focused, which is not a bad thing. But more than ever before, um, money is out there for numerous things. It's just going after it, figuring out how to use it, what you need to use it for, mm -hmm. and how to do that strategically. Um, the commissioners are in the process. We just finalized three dates outward. We're going to be getting on the calendar uh, with you. I'm going to have to look them up to be sure, but we are working outward in March, late March 31st and into April to do um, what we're calling three town gown sort of town hall meetings outward in our community to talk about mm -hmm. we've requested needs from our boroughs and townships and our boards and authorities now we want to go outward to our citizens and just let them know what we've been hearing generally and hear from them about does this make sense to you in the area that you live are there other things we need to know that are of concern to you that we need to be focused on going forward yeah that kind of feedback is so important oh, and it's good huge. that you're seeking it beforehand rather than uh, after you've already started something then found out that uh, you know it's not really something that should be a priority uh, Shireen Hess, of course, you've been on the board for a number of years, and, and, and you have that sort of experience as well. That the idea that the public must be involved in the decision-making process is, is really important. Yes, it is very important, and we're, we're going to try to, to do these three in an effort to get to the citizens in the north, the citizens in the middle of the county, and the citizens in the southern part of the county, mm -hmm. but with the option of coming to any – anybody can visit any one of those three sessions, so – Stay tuned on that, and we think that'll be exciting. And we're going to try to do kind of a, you know, a way that uh, both we have a sort of a general audience type of uh, introduction to what's going on, but then a, an opportunity for citizens to sit at a table with each of us uh, to talk about different things. So they'll have um, multiple opportunities during those sessions to speak to any one of us at any time. So yeah. it'll be a nice opportunity, I think. Yeah, it, it will be. Um, what else uh, is on your mind today? Well, we can all talk about this, but the thing I'm excited about, I'm sure we all are, is this uh, the broadband expansion money that's come through through the CARES funding mm -hmm. that was signed into law uh, under the, the uh, administration before us, but now has now come down through the state, and you see how long things take, sure. you know, to get going. But we can, you know, the other commissioners can talk about the details on that, but I'm really excited. It's going to, this money in particular is going to target the northern part of the county, but we have been expanding broadband throughout the county, and mm -hmm. I guess the overall theme is, it's coming. Please be patient. Uh, we know everybody wants it, but uh, it's an exciting time for us. A lot of investment being made. I'm, I'm going to go home today and, and just uh, <laughs> click on my brand new Internet connection that I don't have yet, but I expect it. It'll I want to say be something there. before Chairman Keith um, tunes in, but you talk about money. Mm -hmm. And even our senator and our representatives and, of course, our planning director, Byron Stauffer, but all the commissioners were on a chain email and because there are so many sources, and we've been working this issue with so many different pockets of money, but yesterday when this money came through and it was announced, 
Um, I won't say who, but someone cropped up and they said, is this old money that's already figured in or is this new? Because should we be really happy about this? So it was wonderful to hear. Yeah. And well, that's it's a it's a valid question, though, isn't it? <laughs> right. Commissioner Keith, well, uh, like like Shireen says, yeah. it's you know, these things have been in the pipeline a long time and being mm -hmm. planned. And then, and you know, the money's sitting there. It's just did we get it yet or not? So, yeah, uh, Mike Keith, uh, come on up and, and join this conversation. Uh, it, it really is something that people wonder about. Well, we keep hearing about this and, and that, and, and when is it actually effective? When do we have the money in hand? And then how do we then get it out into the community doing what we believe is the best the best way to use it? Right, and, and, and the other thing it is with government, and uh, actually as I think all of us have seen over the you know past, once it's announced, it does take time for it to get from point A to point B, I mean, from Harrisburg to Indiana. So mm -hmm. actually, as far as timeline, I don't know when that will happen, but uh, we actually, before the $2 million was announced, we've already committed, again, another sum to put out for RFP uh, for the county. So that was already in the midst. And so this is just going to be additional to, like, most commissioners at, in the northern part of it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about it, though, is, um, you know, once you have it, once you decide what's the best way to use it, um, the idea then, and I was just joking, I said, uh, I'm going to go home and I'm sure I'm going to have a magical new internet connection so I don't have to keep getting it off a, a satellite dish on my roof yeah. uh, and, and uh, have no real broadband. Uh, but uh, it does take time to actually put it into the hands of the people that are going to implement that uh, and, and have actual change. But it is coming, and, and as, as slow as we might think it is, and as, as, as we want to make it go faster, well, we just, these things don't happen in a day. They don't. And, and I, like we've uh, been telling everybody, I mean, it's going to take several hundreds, thousands, millions of dollars to get broadband to hit every outreach of Indiana County. But mm -hmm. you, you have to start somewhere. And, you know, we've put together a good start, and I think if we continue, you know, the efforts will be there to, you know, someday we'll see that at the very end. Yeah, yeah. All right, I want to ask all of you commissioners, and any of you can chime in on this, the announcement yesterday by Homer City Generating Station uh, about how they are going to uh, gradually. Uh, it, it's evidently a step that's going to lead to the eventual shutdown of the plant as we know it now uh, and the implementation of that plan, the phasing out of, uh, of, of uh, certain aspects of the plant will lead to great, great changes uh, for Indiana County. We have heard from Senator Pittman, Representative Struzzi, all along about uh, outreach from the governor's office to get into Indiana County and uh, start helping the people whose jobs will be affected by that. Have we heard anything from no. the office of the governor at all? I mean, no. I mean, the governor's office yesterday uh, called and uh, announced, you know, before it actually come out to the commissioners that, you know, this announcement was going to be made and this is kind of what the effect is. is. But still today... Uh, no, we haven't. Yeah. Okay. Which sort of leads the the county uh, sort of holding the bag in terms of uh, people who are going to uh, say to to they're just going to raise their voices up and say who's there to help us? Uh, who's going to um, fix this? And I don't know that fix is the correct uh, correct term for it, but uh, <laughs> obviously there's a lot of work to do in order to get some workers to get to work. If anybody has a fix for this, we'll take it. Right. Um, what I want everybody to know, because oftentimes, right, um, it comes from the, the spectator, so to speak. Um, you know, what have we been doing? Haven't we been trying to do anything with this? And I will tell you that Senator Pittman and Representative Struzzi, the commissioners, and a whole host of other community partners to, you know, economic development, workforce development for our community are always on our plate every day. Um, we did go out and meet with the plant leaders. They have been working very closely and collaboratively with us. We've been asking for the governor's help. Some of the agencies, um, to their fairness, have reached out to us to say, yes, we will work with you if you can work with the company to do what is called, in essence, a playbook or something where all it really is is doing scenarios of how could we possibly use this if you do take that step to decommission, and that comes to fruition, mm -hmm. that at least we're not waiting until sort of the levers pulled and then saying, what do we do? But we're working with partners while it's in motion to say, what could become? What could we do with this in the future instead mm -hmm. of letting it all be torn down and then start to think about it? 
That's also very complex, Todd. I mean, I don't need to tell anybody, right? Because the jobs become in question. People are fearful of losing. And then what next? And what if what you say that you're planning doesn't come through, right? Then you get hit for that. Um, And then all, you know, the owners and everyone else are going to get a lot of attention and things while they're trying to do good that could um, keep us off task or just defray where we're trying to move. So it's not it's not an easy thing to do. We're not being secretive. We're not trying to hide anything. Um, it's just a matter of can we get it out there in the open? Can we start to work together to say this is an asset of property and things that are here that could be transitioned or reformed into something else for us and for our future? Um, and can we do that now instead of sort of when it's, you know, yeah. too late? Yeah, and Commissioner Hess, of course, uh, uh, as you know, and, and your fellow commissioners do, that this is one power plant that we're talking about, but plans are uh, obviously going to be advanced for the other power plants in Indiana County. Some announcements have already been made. So this is really a long-term thing mm. uh, um, um, that we're really going to have to address over the next decade to find out if Indiana County still has a future. Mm. Uh, because it's been, um, Indiana County's history is so tied to the energy industry, but do we have a long-term future in the energy industry here in Indiana County? Well, you're right. We, you know, Western Pennsylvania, we built this country with energy and, and all sorts of different resources, natural resources. And so, um, yeah, it's important for people to remember that heritage. Uh, but the world is moving on uh, and we are going to have to move with it. And there are, you know, there are sources of renewable energy. That's a big talk. And we're, you know, we're trying to figure out where, what our place is with that. But there's also gas, gas, you know, natural gas as a, as a, um, you know, transition type of energies. And, you know, and the economics of it is really what's driving a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are other play things at play. um, But we, and you, I mean, you started this conversation off with the workers. I think that's our, you know, one of our big concerns is where, where do these displaced workers go? Uh, that remains to be seen. There is all sorts of money out there for, tra- um, you know, worker training. Um, you know, what are the new industries? What are the new kinds of um, opportunities for workers? That is also something that takes a long time to, once you have money designated for it, to put it into place and to get these programs going. Mm-hmm. And we know there are bills in the, both chambers of the of the legislature now that want to target that. So we hope that the governor, the administration, and the legislature can work together because. We're the, you know, we're the fallout here. Yeah. Uh, we can't wait for them to fight it out. We really need partnership now. Yeah. Well, the the linchpin, of course, uh, is actually having jobs to train people for. Yeah. Uh, so you can get all kinds of money for training and, and you can get people into training programs. But until you have the industry for them to go into with that training, then you really don't have a whole lot uh, in your pocket. And, and I think overall, we must... As a county, we must dedicate our efforts to making sure those people don't say, there's nothing for me here in Indiana County. I'm moving to wherever, Ohio, West Virginia, Texas, wherever they're going, uh, because we have to keep them here in Indiana County. Yeah, that's 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 the uh, biggest, you know, problem that we're going to face. And let, let's face it, once those plans shut down, and like you said, those displaced workers are there without a job, I mean, we need to actually be here and right now from Harrisburg as what's going to happen? Are you actually going to build plants? Are you bringing plants here? I mean, are, we're, we're working on bringing plants here. We've, we've talked to uh, different businesses. I mean, COVID, yes, put a pause on it, but we're still looking as, you know, through the planning commission over there, we're still looking for businesses to come in. We need those plants, you know, in place right now. So they're ready to accept those dis- displaced workers mm-hmm. whenever those, you know, jobs are gone. Yeah. We can't wait till they're gone because those people aren't going to stick around. They have bills to pay. Yeah. Exactly. They have bills to pay. Exactly. And, Todd, uh, if I may, um, one of the con- things that concerns me, and I'm sure all of us sit and watch, well, if you were watching the game or whatever, but you see this push for electrical vehicles and electrical, a lot of things. And we know it's phased in. We hear a lot about renewable energies. My concern is where is the – nationwide plan and can we please see what kinds of alternatives can take the place of fossil fuels so that we don't get into a case where you know six seven years out we're we're moving but we have nothing to fall back on and all of a sudden we're facing brownouts and blackouts and 
horrible conditions with regard to not having a national energy plan and, of course, for our states to hook on to that. Yeah, absolutely. The the, the interconnectivity between all of those issues uh, and, and living a life here in America is, is extremely but America Extremely wasn't difficult. built on fear and and not not thinking forward. That's what we're all about. So while those are big concerns, and I agree, uh, we're going to fi- find answers to these questions. And we're just going to make it happen. <laughs> They're there. We're just going to have to find them. Our county <laughs> commissioners, thank you so much all for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Jane. Thank you. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS.